Altrincham manager Phil Parkinson joins us on uh, Wednesday evening after uh, training. Phil, um, fantastic day on Saturday at York and to go there and win four times in not much more than a year without conceding a goal is a quite incredible achievement. Yeah, it's magnificent, isn't it? It's a, a real credit to the players to be able to go and do that. It's something that we'll take a lot of pride in and uh, we'll use that as a motivational tool moving forward. We got uh, things right right from the word go. I thought we were the better team in the uh, opening uh, minutes and got the early uh, goal. And despite the fact that York came back at us and, and performed well in the first uh, half, we were very, very strong at the back. Yeah, I felt uh, we were really comfortable, weren't we? They, they had uh, a few moments where they were getting the ball out wide. I think it was Ferguson on the, uh, the left-hand side and he was delivering some great balls in. Uh, and uh, Toby and Tom had to be on the toes and defend them crosses which we'd been working on prior to that so it was nice to see that the little bit of defensive stuff with the lads we'd done in terms of the individual stuff it had paid dividends on the day but I'd like to think overall we were, we were fairly comfortable um, defensively and offensively I thought we, pl we had some really good forward link up play some really good combination stuff again some great work that Neil's done on the pitch with them going forward and one of the goals actually come from some of them combinations so it was good to see. And when you look at their back three, uh, Joe Tate, uh, Steve McNulty and Sean Newton, very, very uh, good back three, uh, possibly one of the best in the league. And we made them look really ordinary on Saturday. Yeah, um, they, they are uh, some of the, the best defenders in the league. And Jordan, Dan Mooney, Josh Hancock, Elliot Durrell really give them a run around at times. Uh, and like I said, it, it's not just luck that, that that happens. It's been a lot of hard work on the training pitch, a lot of hours put in, a lot of extra hours put in as well, I might add, by the players, by the staff to, to be able to get to those levels. So full credit to everyone involved. And as you said there, we're seeing the rewards of that hard work. The two goals, um, great goal for the sweeping ball by Jake Malt, Dan Mooney onto it. Brought the ball down superbly and a really clever ball into Josh. And Josh has uh, got into the right position and it was an interesting finish. But uh, Matt rode his luck a little bit, but he did really well. Yeah, he's got to be there to finish it, hasn't he? And um, that's one thing that Josh does. He's, he's always in the right place at the right time to be able to take his opportunities. So the link-up play and the switch from Jake just prior to that was what we're all about really in terms of getting it wide early and obviously creating combination phases of play which the lads can execute really well on the day. I mean, if you look at Dan Mooney at the moment, he's absolutely on fire. Elliot Durrell, you fancy him one-on-one, -on -one, nine times out of ten to finish. Jordan, although he's not scored in the, in the two games, his link-up play has been absolutely outstanding the way he sort of dominated the centre half he's playing against, but not just physically, mentally as well, which is something you wouldn't always associate with Jord. Um, but he's, he's outthought his opponents in terms of upstairs. And again, that's been a real development of Jordan, particularly this season, the way he's seen passes where sometimes he, he wouldn't have in the past. And uh, without that kind of awareness that he's, he's developed now, we wouldn't be scoring the chances we have because we've got a lot of intelligent players and they feed off that and Jordan's obviously the centrepiece of everything we do when we attack. With the second goal, Jordan was the initial instigator and when Connor Hampson's uh, swung in a really good uh, cross, he's won the header fairly comfortably. And they clearly were very worried about him because I think the man's <coughs> peeled away from Tom Pierce and just left him a little bit of space. So when it came down for Tom, he still had a bit to do, but it was a nice finish. Yeah, I think, again, Jordan's distraught. He's not, he's not glanced that header in, so he's hit the crossbar and he deserved a goal that day. Um, but Tom does, what, Tom does well at Booth and Crescent and scores goals, doesn't he? So um, I'm sure they're, they're happy to see the back of Tom walking out of there. But... I'm sure Tom can't wait to go back if they do. If we do manage to have a game at Boovan Crescent again. And when um, York made uh, their substitutions, uh, you responded almost immediately. And, and I've got to say, I thought Craig Marne and uh, Tom Pierce did a really good job defensively. Yeah, well, I must say, although we've not changed the starting eleven, the efforts by everyone in the squad has been second to none. So where we've had recovery days on the Tuesday, the lads who haven't played have done extra running after games, which you would expect, that's a given anyway. But also to to see that they're not playing because obviously the, how well the other lads are playing, um, other lads would lose a bit of heart. But one of the good things at Altrincham is everybody pulls together and the lads are giving everything behind the scenes in terms of the squad 
the lads who aren't playing have been absolutely, their attitudes have been second to none. Boston United uh, are the team in front of us on Saturday and uh, we'll be, if we can overcome them, we're into the National League. I don't think it really makes too much difference whether we played uh, Boston at their place or Gateshead here. And I thought it was a reasonably close game uh, between Boston and Gateshead. Yeah, Boston, very good team. Gateshead, again, one of the best teams in the league. Um, everybody in the playoffs are capable of beating each other, so... When I watched the the footage back, obviously there was n not a great deal in the first half, and then Boston really went into cruise control in the second half. I felt a uh, really good team, very very athletic, very physical. Got some real good technicians in there as well. Very tactically aware team. And when you look back at the last ten games, I think it was us and them at the top of the form chart. So. Um, they always say cream rises to the top, doesn't it? So the two teams who've probably been in form probably deserve to be in that final for all the hard work that they've probably put in during that 17-week period. I think you're sort of seeing them two going head-to-head -head on Saturday. So uh, they're, they're a team we really respect. They're a team that we're going to sort of really study and we, we look at and make sure we're as prepared as we can be going into that game because anything less than 100% then we'll get beat. It's as simple as that. They're one of the best teams in the league. They deserve to be where they are. They finished above us, so we'll give them all the respect they due. Um, but we're also due a little bit of payback as well because they absolutely thumped us at their place earlier on in the season. But I would say that's probably where we were at our weakest as well. So we were probably having a bit of a bad time. Hit a team who, for me, are the most improved team in the league. Uh, recruited really well. Got some a lot of loan players, uh, but good loan players as well because that doesn't always go well for you if you get a lot of loan players. So what Craig's done there has been a superb job and we'll give them all the respect that they do. Very strong squad as well when you've got the likes of uh, Dominic Knowles, uh, Frank Mulhern, Simon Ainge on the bench. Um, that says that they've, they've probably got 15, 20 players there. Yeah, and this is what we're up against every week. I'm, I don't want to be that guy who makes excuses and looks for an out before a game. But we're fighting bigger budgets every single game we're going into. Teams who are hybrid full-time, that's what we faced all the way through. Um, and we won't we won't sort of hide away from the challenge that that we face, but we believe we're good enough uh, to go there and get a result, um, and we'll be doing everything in our capabilities to do that. And it'll be the third and final game uh, played behind uh, closed doors. What sort of experience have you found that? It's uh, it's been a bit surreal, but I think when you when you're in the heat of battle and you you're watching your team play. I think even if there's 10,000 people behind you, you know when you first walk out you would notice but you're that, you're, you're that sort of embroiled in the game you don't really notice to be honest. Uh, obviously when you score a goal you don't get that roar that you would normally get but in general I think I think once the game starts, I don't know if it's just me but I don't really notice that much difference. It's obviously magic when you've got all the fans there and they're all shouting and cheering but when you're watching the game it's the same when you're a player, you don't really hear it, it's, like, it's a bit of a dim noise so... It has been surreal, but we're kind of getting used to it now. That's the thoughts of Altringham manager Phil Parkinson ahead of Saturday's uh, National League North uh, promotion final at the Jakeman Stadium against Boston United.